Clark. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, of course. I'm excited. By way of introduction, Mm -hmm. is it okay with you if I read a paragraph from one of your blogs? Oh, sure. That sounds great. For over a year, I had successfully managed to keep the table free of permanent stains and scars. I got hot. I could feel the anger, regret, and shame bubbling inside me. I was already preparing my excuse for what my mom would say next time she came over. Oh, Samantha, your poor table. What did you do? I immediately thought about the couch at my friend's house growing up. I had internalized that couch as the model of adulthood, responsibility, and moral goodness. And here I was, staring at evidence that I had failed to achieve any of it. And then I remembered. What did I remember? Well, that was an instance where I think what it was was my kids had made a mess, probably Augie, my six-year-old. And rather than like feeding into this really deep insecurity I had about having like quote unquote nice things, I thought, no, I can flip this. And and actually this is a sign that my kids are having a good time, that they're exploring and they're using the things. Like he doesn't know that table is nice or whatever. He's just using the table. And so I decided like, oh, that's actually going to be that's like a nice little scar on that table. That's going to help me remember like how lovely and chaotic these years are with young children. Okay. Do you want to yeah. go like just kind of go through the evolution like Yeah. So I was born and raised in St. Louis out in Chesterfield. So 63017. And, but I lived in the 314 area code. And I feel like it's very important that I share that just for context. Um, So I lived out there, grew up, and then I went away to college in Tennessee. And then I lived in a ski town in Colorado for like my, all of my twenties. And then my husband and I moved back when I was pregnant with my first child, which was a surprise (laughs) and we moved back in 2017 so was it having the baby that 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 brought you back right because st louis like i mean it's like a boomerang city right like so many people grow up here and they're dying to get out and then when they get that like kind of out of their system and they need to i don't know for me it was raised children like i felt like okay i have to go back because it is a very amazing city to raise kids it is so, having grown up here you knew st louis was a great place to raise kids specifically sure. specifically why um well one it's a very manageable city like if you've ever lived anywhere else there is traffic but it's nothing like a denver and atlanta and la whatever you can kind of get anywhere that you want to go in less than a half hour Like, I I feel like that is the threshold, right? Like you are always within a half hour of everything you could ever possibly need. Honestly, more like 10 minutes. (laughs) Right. Like with traffic, it's a half hour. Right. Exactly. So, and it was very familiar. It's very cozy. It's not pretentious. It's got amazing um, free resources, which I think like, you know, we could talk about ad nauseum about that. So then you can focus on the things that really matter. Like, how do I want to raise my children? What schools am I interested in them going to? You know, like what grocery store do I want to stop at, shop at most of the time? Like you can do all of those things because you've got time for it living in the city. Okay. So once you got here and you got settled and you found a school and you found a community, then you got back into creating. Yeah. I mean, I think like the haze of having young children kind of wore off when, Um, honestly, when I was pregnant with my second one, I started getting this feeling of like, well, if this is what I'm in for, if I'm going to be raising kids, like that's for me, that was simply just not enough. And so I went back to the thing that always brought me joy and made me feel like, I think I'm on this earth for this purpose. And that was art making creativity in general. Um, and you know, when you become a parent, like you, you definitely know this, you feel Hmm. No, when you become a mother, (laughs) you feel like your hobbies and your interests that don't serve your family necessarily are now unavailable to you. Like you just don't have time for that. And so I wanted to challenge that idea because I really kind of felt like if I didn't do it, that I was going to lose my mind. I I really thought I would be on a path to crazy (laughs) if I didn't do something about it. So 
Um, I started very slow getting back into painting. I kind of equate it to like starting an exercise routine. Like it was hard at first. I didn't know what to do. I felt uncomfortable. I felt like I didn't really belong or deserve to be making art again. So I kind of, I committed to like, I don't even know, maybe a half hour, hour every day. And I would listen to a podcast and just work. And then eventually I started having what I guess you could call breakthroughs and, you know, an hour became two hours and I got really excited about it. And I would be bummed that, you know, Augie's nap was over and I had to go back to being a mom. And, you know, that's, that's a good thing. Like when you're bummed about leaving the thing that you're doing, you know, that you're probably doing the right thing. (laughs) So that's sort of how that evolved. And then, and now it's what I would consider my full-time job. I want to call it a business, Mm -hmm. but I'm not sure that, Sure. but is that like a dirty word in the art world? I do worry about, or not worry. I do think about things like marketing. I do think about what am I presenting myself as, you know, what like strategically purchasing things because I need to sell them. You know, I do think about those things. There's elements to a business in it, but really it's, it's just, I, it's what I have to do. And I also need to make money. So I'm like merging those things together. Right. So you are a professional artist. Oh yeah. Absolutely. A professional artist. Yes. And I would love to be more professional and more profound. (laughs) So I'm working on that right now. I just want people to know where they can buy it. Yeah. So I do have a website, Samantha Clark, Clark with an E, art.com. Um, and then I have an Instagram where I'm, I'm pretty active there and I do sell things on Instagram that I don't sell in my website. Um, and that is Instagram handle Samantha Clark with an E art. I'm currently working on a bunch of prints. I'm doing some digital work. I had a stu- I have a studio and it, it actually flooded over the holiday break and it's getting repaired. So that's good. So right now I'm working mostly off my iPad at home. That's not all you do more. I do more. Yes. So, um, I have not fully abandoned, uh, my previous role, which was working at the school where our children go to school, Villa Di Maria Montessori. Um, and in the summer they have a camp called Camp Pagnita. So I am the director along with my friend and a teacher from the school, Megan. And every summer we spend 11 weeks with a bunch of kids from West County, basically. (laughs) And it's super fun. Do you want to tell the origin story of Pegnita and sort of tie it into sure current philosophy of Pegnita? Sure. So Pegnita itself is not like a real word. It's um, the hybrid of the two women who started Camp Pegnita 76 years ago, um, Peggy and Anita. And so they had the property um, that is in Kirkwood. Actually, like half the campus done is Kirkwood and half is Huntley. Mm-hmm. But if that gives you an idea of where we are, that's where it is. Um, it's a six acre campus, wooded, just so beautiful, so amazing. You can't even believe that you're in Kirkwood. It definitely feels more like like Wildwood or somewhere way out west. Anyway, so they started this camp and they used to take a like delivery truck that had benches on the side and they would drive around Kirkwood picking up children to come to camp. And so we can't, we can't do that anymore (laughs) for like 1 billion reasons, but it is a really cute little, it it represents definitely the vibe of camp, which is you come here and you have a old school childhood experience. There's no screens. We don't have, you know, if we have indoor time, it's because you're sweaty and it's hot and you literally need to be indoors drinking water for a second. Mm -hmm. Um, they're doing archery. They're swimming twice a day. They're doing like, um, planned activities. Like we have art, we have a really robust arts and crafts program. We have themed weeks where skits, you know, skits are constantly involved, but really they get to kind of decide what they want to do. Like if they, that week are really into having, you know, a, um, like a soccer match, like that, those counselors let the child lead them or let those campers lead them and they develop like a little a little soccer tournament or something like that um so sort of like um a Montessori philosophy it is child driven Mm -hmm. so they're really getting to explore what they want to explore and have that a robust childhood experience we have groups for ages entering kindergarten Mm -hmm. four five 
um, but definitely entering kindergarten through entering seventh grade. And then we also have a counselor and training program, which is for like 13 and 14 year olds, where it's three weeks of they they learn how to be a camp counselor. And that's actually how we pull most of our counselors. So I would say, gosh, a number 60, 70 percent of our counselors were campers and they have they they carry with them those traditions and those songs and the the funny things that Megan and I don't even really know about half the time. Um, it's a really cool spot. Okay, so starting at five, going through 13, and 13 through, is the CIT? Um, yeah, so if you are entering, let's see, it's five through 12, entering kindergarten, entering oh. seventh grade. And then once you are entering eighth or ninth grade, you are eligible for the CIT program, counselor and training. Okay, and you said it was three weeks. So, they, so you only have CIT for three of the... Mm-hmm. Yes, okay. we have a two week training and then a one week where they're essentially interns and they're with a group the whole week and they're learning. And then the super secret is that after you've gone through the CIT program, if you're really eager and if you're really good at what you're doing, we allow you to stay on um, and you're not hired, but you can come anytime you would like and help out. Okay, yeah, so you guys fun. like you get in, you get on a roll, you get your bearings, all the other counselors get their bearings. And then exactly. you're like, okay, let's introduce this new yeah. piece of the puzzle, the CIT. Got it. You don't want them to be looking at super green counselors as they're learning what they're doing. Okay. That makes so much sense. But in the past, we've been able to have up to like 20 CITs and feel like we can do a really good job with them. This year, we're in a really unique situation because, as you know, our campus is due, is under some construction and we're going to have a lot more indoor space. So while we like having most of our activities outside in the summer, it is so imperative that we have adequate indoor space for the CIT program because they are doing a little bit more like research and reading. They put together um, a binder that they work on for those three weeks and they need like a quiet space to work. And this summer we have more than enough space. So we would love to see more CIT. Honestly, the 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 camaraderie that you build in that process, like that's a that's a really intense age to give them that kind of responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, so if they can go through that together, I think it really makes for a strong cohort that we really love hiring. Um, so we would love to see more people apply this summer. The greatest thing about the CIT program, it is a paid um it is a paid program, so you pay to belong to join it. But the next year, it's pretty much guaranteed employment. Nice. Um, and we, you know, so you would be 14 entering the job force with a really great job. I, like a really super, I mean, like if it's for you, right? Like if you are camp yeah, oh, material, sure. this is a great job. So you're saying three weeks in the summer when you're 13, when you're 14, you've got a guaranteed job. Um, mm -hmm. If it fits, if it's a good fit. Yeah. And we have honest conversations about that with them. Okay. Anything else about Camp Pagnita that you would like people to know? Um, no, you know, honestly, like if you are confused about this location and where, where we're at, if you've never heard of it, like I totally encourage you to go on our website, get the address and just drive by, you know, if in Kirkwood, you would never expect this little oasis, you know? Um, it's super inconspicuous. So just give it, drive by, see if that's something that you'd be interested in sending your kid to. Yeah, no, the campus is great. The program is awesome. Uh, what should kids wear to camp? Um, like lot sunscreen, mm -hmm. lots of sunscreen, <laughs> swimsuits, sunscreens, cotton t-shirts that can dry, <laughs> like the bare minimum, honestly, it's hot. They're outside all day. Okay. So switching gears. Sure. In addition to being a mom mm -hmm. and a professional artist mm -hmm. and um, managing Camp Pagnita in the summer, mm -hmm. you still do other things for people, kind of house related, specifically what's behind you. Um, yeah, so this is like a little gallery wall. And this one is, um, gosh, what word would I use to describe it? <laughs> I don't even really know. Like, it's not like my favorite things in the whole world. It's just, you know, random photos that I love and really like individually they're fine, but it all together, it looks awesome. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's something that 
people can, you can help people do at their own house if they don't feel, because a lot of people, especially you have a historic home in the city with plaster walls. Yes, which are the best and the worst. (laughs) Yeah, right. And so here's our real estate adjacent part of the podcast. Mm -hmm. When I help people buy a home and they move into a home, then some of them have a certain kind of paralysis. Like I, I have literally gone back Mm-hmm. three, four, five years later. And they're like, we never got the art on the walls. Yeah. And I'm like, well, now it's time to sell. So it's okay. But right. wouldn't it have been nice to live with it for those three, four, five years? Right. So, so you actually can help people get past that paralysis. Yeah. I mean, I think part of it is, do I put a hole in this wall? Like, yes, of course you do. We can patch up holes in the wall. No problem. Right. Um, And then part of it too, I think people don't feel qualified to hang, especially something large, you know, Mm -hmm. something big on the wall. Like I, you know, you might not consider yourself an artistic person. So why do you have any business choosing something to hang on the wall? When really it's just as simple as if you like it and it fits, you should put it up there. (laughs) Well, I think I, I, I found with my mom this year, she wanted to hang up a wall like this and she has a ton. I mean, she's like, older and classic, classic boomer has held on to every single thing she's ever owned ever. And so we kind of, we toyed with that. And I made a a massive gallery wall in her living room that I don't know, maybe it took an hour of my time and she was blown away. And that was a really aha moment for me because I, I am able to just throw things up and if it doesn't work, I move it really quickly. Like I, I make very quick decisions about hanging stuff like this. Um, and she, she told me, she's like, that would have taken me so long. I would have overthought every step. I would have been, you know, measuring things perfectly and that's fine if that's your jam, but if that's not your jam and you just want something on the wall, like, I feel like I am, I am exactly the person that you should talk to. (laughs) Well, and you, you will do it, right? Like people can hire you. You can hire me to do that. And if you are looking for larger pieces and you actually want to buy art, and, you know, my art, <clears throat> which if you go over to my Instagram or website, like it's not for everyone. It's very colorful. It's very bright. It's very bold. I like to think everyone could possibly have it, but I get it. But I'm happy to direct you to um, local artists that have really amazing work uh, that is surprisingly more affordable than you think. I mean, it's certainly not like going to Target and just getting something to hang on your mantle, but um you know, if you're really looking for a quality, amazing piece that reflects you and your family, like I can, I can certainly help you with that. There's so many things you can do with a gallery wall and it doesn't have to be, um, formal. It doesn't have to be really planned, you know, really thoughtful on your end. Um, that's where I can come in and say, actually, you have everything you need. Let's talk about it. We are to the St. Louis lightning round. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite coffee shop where you can meet a mom or a friend, doesn't have to be a mom, and have a good conversation and know that your kids are playing safely? Um, Gosh, I have multiple answers for that. Okay. Okay. So if it's on a whim and you aren't making a plan, I would say either Caldi's, Damun, or Kirkwood. Uh, the Caldies in Demun is small, but it's right next to a fully gated park with a bathroom and a drinking fountain that is age appropriate for the youngest of the youngest to the oldest. Um, so Caldies in Demun, and then the Caldies in Kirkwood for similar reasons, um, although it is bigger. So if it's rainy, you can be inside. Um, also, Caldies has amazing sweet treats for children. Um, but it's right next to the train station and they have a big plaza outside. So if you want to sit outside, you know that your kids can kind of run freely. They can go look at the trains. It is next to a busy street, but I do think it's like the best place to go if you just want to get some solid outside time. Um, and then also, uh, urban fort down off. What is that? Russell? I think it's like, Mm -hmm. um, you have to make a reservation and you do pay for it, but it's like the ultimate you walk in take your shoes off, get a coffee. And like, you don't even have to pay attention to what your children are doing. So I have met there many times with friends, um, especially with toddlers, there's a slide, there's toys to play with. Like they're totally entertained. You can actually have an adult conversation there. Nice. Um, okay. Next question. Favorite Saturday with kids in, in the city. Honestly, I love going, we just went to the art museum. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm going to do rainy Saturday because I do think like that's, that's really hard. The rain is Uh tricky with children. Um, But we just took our kids this last Sunday to the art museum just for an hour. And um, obviously like my kids, I have conversations with them all the time about art being precious. Like Mm -hmm. they're aware of that, but they're not aware of like, you know, stepping too close to the art. So it's a good time to have a conversation with them about like how to, to be in an art museum. Um, and it's so big and echoey and grand. And I really do feel like the kids get that instantly. And there is this sort of reserve when they're there, like they're just in awe and there's really cool stuff. Like we went to the, the armor section and found swords and things that look like knights. And my six-year-old was, he's like, did that kill someone? I'm like, well, I don't really know. I never thought that. I mean, that's funny. Yeah. Like I, I know. Like, that I wonder many if it's times good. and that never occurred to me. <laughs> right. So it is just a cool, like it's a great space to be. It's free, 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 free. Mm-hmm. Um, if you need to entice them with a gift shop, they have awesome like children's books and puzzles and little cutesy things. Um, and they also have a cafe where you can get like a snack if you need to while you're there. Favorite weekend within mm-hmm. driving distance of St. Louis that is awesome for kids. Did we talk about this, Don? Have you been? This is, this, will, this is like so not, you know, if I had a brand, I feel like this wouldn't be my brand. We recently went to the Bass Pro Shops in Springfield. Okay. Okay. Tell me more. Okay. So if you go to Springfield, Missouri, it's about 30 or three hours away. Mm-hmm. Um, real quick drive. And they have a the the original Bass Pro Shop is there. And inside the Bass Pro Shop, other than it being a massive place to buy a bunch of things, including boats wave runner I mean anything um they have like an indoor alligator pit they have what they have like streams running through the Bass Pro Shop with fish running around they've got a natural history museum slash aquarium um that you pay for it is on par I would say the national history museum there is on par with any natural history museum you've ever been to it is so cool um, it takes forever to walk through, but like both my kids, I had Patrick who's two walk the whole thing. And he was just like, oh. um, it's in I, the Bass Pro Shop or it, yeah, it's attached to the Bass Pro Shop. So if you like Google Springfield Aquarium, like if you heard that this aquarium is super cool. No, I, no. I had heard it, but didn't believe it. And then we happened to go my, I have a, we have family in Arkansas. So we were on our way down and I was truly blown away. It is the coolest place to take kids. I mean, of any age. Okay. That's awesome. That's why I do this. <laughs> I'm like, I just really want to, you know, cause you get kind of stuck in your rut. You think, you know, everything about the city and then, or near the city and near, and like, it's just not true. I don't. So like, I love, love, love hearing other people. Yeah, it's a really inexpensive city. city. Like you can get a hotel room for an exceptionally reasonable price and just make a little weekend of it. Thank you. Yeah, of so course. For doing yeah, this. this. Is fun. Um so anyway, any parting words? I really love St. Louis. I'm glad we're back here. I'm glad that the art scene is really great and profound. And um yeah, I'm I'm really glad that you're highlighting some of these like really special things that make St. Louis more unique than you think. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, my friends. I will see you later. Yes. Yes, thanks, Don.